Hi everyone, my name is Stephen May and you are watching That Show with Mahi and today I am talking to Amy Met from Nick Hammond Casting. Amy, welcome. Thank you very much. Hello. How are you going, Stephen? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, thanks so much good. for joining me on this show. I guess I've created it in the sense mm. of trying to, I guess, open up the industry in a, in a way that we can all sit back and, you know, ask these questions and a lot of people ask me questions totally. because, you know we're in the industry and we're working um i guess a little bit about you're a casting director um tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about like what a casting director is from your point of view yeah well, we're that middleman we're that person that you know the director the producer um comes to us and you know we try and source the best cast possible so that's our job to sift through the suggestions and, um, you know, get as many suggestions as possible and sift through them and do our part by not only getting the suggestions, but also going through our own database. Um, and that's not to be confused with the database where we represent people. I think a lot of people that are starting out think that casting directors are agents, but it's not the case. So we've got our own database so we can keep track of freelancers and, you know, all these kind of people that we want to make sure we're looking under every rock um, to make sure we're getting the best in. Um, and then that way the director doesn't have to do that part, you know, so we're there to sift through that, get them in, show and, and hopefully, you know, find someone that they, that they really like and then do the callback stage and then go from there. Yeah. So I it's a, it's a, it's a good part to find, you know, find those gems. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said you've got your own database. Now, is yes. that a database of people that have contacted you um, via, if, if they're like yeah. a freelance actor or is it like if they've got an agent and they've been submitted? And I think there's going to be a, two parts of the question. I've got an agent mm. I, and I get submitted through my agent to them. Uh, now, is that sort of generally the, the main way that you castings are done? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so our database is full of, you know, people that are represented and not. And that way, especially for those that are not represented, if we have you on our database and then we do a search like we would on Showcast or Casting Networks, yeah. then we're not missing you. So this probably, you know, stems to you sending us your information, especially if you're not represented. So we can um, put you on that database and get all your contact details and all of that stuff that we need to reach out to you. So it's really important that you do reach out to all casting directors um, being non-represented and get them your info. The best uh, way to do it. How, how would I do that if I wasn't represented? What, do I just like knock on your door and be like, hey guys, how you going? Uh, here's yeah. my, here's your head you got. Don't, don't knock on our door. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, it's 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 a, it's a, it is a bit random, honestly. There are a couple of people. It seems so old school now to knock on the door and go, "Hey, here's my printed CV and headshot." That's useless to us. We will probably shred it. So everything's online. Just email us. Get your agent. Or, you know, obviously, if you don't have an agent, they'll um, email us with it, and then we can put that information on on file, so to speak. So it's just an area where we can have all your details. Um, so, but we really enforce that we, we've got a, I think most casting directors have like a, like an admin email where you can send stuff to like an agent would like submissions. Yeah. Uh, we've got one that's on file at nickhcasting.com. So if you email that, we go through that email, put all the information up and then reach out to you. Hopefully there's something to see you for. Yeah. And so would you suggest sort of, um, like a show reel or a clip? With, and then, you know, yes. like so, and slate that with, you know, my name's Stephen, I'm six foot three, um, you know, live in Melbourne and I'm like those basic details, but give give them something. Yeah, just, to see, not just like, I've done like my amateur musical theatre society show for the last 10 years, which is great. That's the yeah, experience, but of course. that's not going to, that's not what you are after. Like, they need, do you need to see them doing something? No, I, yes, yes, definitely. Um, I think more than ever, you know, it's more important now than ever to show yourself on a reel and, and have that available, whether it's on your casting profiles or via email, you know, if you've got a Vimeo link or you're just sending your showcast profile. I mean, you pay so much for this profile. You may as well, you can email it straight out to agents and casting directors. You may as well utilise it. It can have all your credits or your headshots, multiple media 
mm. you know, videos, whether it's voiceovers, um, real, your little sizzler, um, accents, like there's so many so many videos you can upload. So if you can package an email with just a link that says, hey, I'm Stephen May, um, Melbourne based, here's my showcast profile, then that's all we need. Yeah, you know, you don't have to fill this email up with all this information. There's a chance that we're not going to read it all, you know, like it's, yeah. you got, want to be really snappy and really, you know, uh, just really quick, I suppose, with what you've got to show. Yeah. Um, yeah. If that a makes of, sense. Yeah. A lot of castings, I guess, actors can get inside their head and thinking about the process and how we do it and, you know, what is the right thing to do. It is such a quick turnaround. I mean, you guys get a project and it can be a matter of like 24 hours and the cast are kind of, not the last thing to think about, but they're, it's, a, it's a very quick process. Totally. Mm. I guess, what's, is there something like the top three advice of things to, that you want actors to hit in the room? Uh, I mean, the, the, this could be a whole lesson of like how to, how to tape and how to cast. Yes. But, um, because yeah, the, the next question will be what not to do. Um, but I guess, totally. you know, to encourage and stay positive and moving forward, how can we, what is just the top three things you like? You know what, if you get these three, these three things right, I think the others will start to, to follow. Absolutely, absolutely. So kind of my tips are, so it always actually starts from when you get the booking, I think. So when you get the time and your agent sent you the details or, you know, you freelance and you get the details directly through us, yep. check all the material first. So sides, there's always going to be a script regardless, especially in TV season, majority of the time, you're probably not going to have any lines. It might be a visual thing. Yep. So check that there's a script because if you come in and you don't know what you're auditioning for, that just says, speaks volumes of the kind of person you're going to be and how reliable you're going to be on set. Yeah. So it's really important that you check there's a script. And if there's not, ask your agent. Um, and if the agent doesn't send you one, then like it's there partly to blame. But I think the, it has to fall on both. You have to ask. Yeah. And if there's not one, then great, you've asked. But um, at least know what your, what your role is about and what you might be doing. You're probably not going to know exactly what the blocking is going to be and all that stuff, but mm -hmm. you're going to know the gist of it. So that's so important that you come in ready to go and knowing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, two, which is really kind of common sense stuff is if you're late, give us a call, you know, yeah. um, we want you to be on time. So you aren't stressed in the waiting room. There's nothing worse than coming into a waiting room and sitting there with people that look like you. I mean, you probably experienced that feeling, right? You just like, yeah. you're all dressed the same. You look the same. It's a bit awkward. So, you coming in rushed and panicked and probably parched. I mean, it sounds so silly, but, yeah. you know, coming in, getting a water, all that stuff, sitting down, you know, filling out your form, it does help. Then when you enter the room, you can feel at ease. Mm. Like, you know me, I'm really personable. I'll, I'll you know, have a laugh and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah. So I want you to feel as comfortable as possible. So if you're running late and all that stuff leads up to it, you know, you probably screwed from the start. Yeah. So we really want you to be as relaxed as possible. Come in, let's have a chat, let's get the job done and then you can walk away feeling like you've done the best you can. Um, and probably my last tip would be when you're in the room, um, I say this a lot, but especially when I'm doing workshops and stuff, it's like, come ready to play, you know, come really open-minded, come mm -hmm. in the way, like, and do something that you've thought of and rehearsed maybe, yeah. but come in and and be open to the change. I mean, that goes for all castings, TV, film, TVCs. If you don't change your direction and change what we're asking you to do and you put up this wall, um, we can't get anywhere. And there's like not going to be that many takes we're going to be able to do. So yeah. it's really important that you're open and ready to play. Yeah, so that'd awesome. be my couple of my tips. I mean, there's heaps, but yeah, that's kind yeah. of just one. So yeah. Um, one thing I really wanted to talk to you about, and I know that you and I have had a conversation not on this before, is about headshots. Uh, look like yes. your headshot. <laughs> I mean... Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so stressful. Um, it's not that hard. It's it, not that hard. Yeah, I mean, I, is there a misconception that for some people that they get a, um, a headshot done and it's like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like what you're, you, you'd see more headshots yeah. than I would uh, every day. Like 
Oh, just, yeah. just some like, you know, neutral raw shots in my mind is probably better than that glammed up super like yes. Photoshop photo. Absolutely. You being made up and blown out and this blow wave of a hair kind of situation is not how you're going to look every day. Yeah. Um, so we need to see the most wholesome, the most genuine, true to you image. Um, and it can be just basic as a white wall with, you know, on your iPhone. Like if you can't afford the headshots, we're not expecting these $3,000 glamour shots, you know, keep it really simple. And in front of a bush, I don't know, like it's, it's just your head being, and you're smiling, not smiling. If you're a man with facial hair, facial hair, not facial hair, you know? Um, so I just think, yeah, keep it as true to you as possible because when we see you walk in, and you look nothing like your headshot, which your headshot probably look like you would be suitable for, and then you rock up and you don't look like that, then mm. it's a waste of your time and out. So yeah. yeah, it's so important that you look like yourself. Yeah. It's so important. Uh, yeah. I've noticed a lot with your casting, well, it, it seems that you've had a really exciting opportunity to cast a, such a diverse range of people, um, real mm. people in, in ads. Um, I think it was the most recent one, that was it the McCain's ad? Um, the one we did like through us during isolation during isolation yeah yeah um, yeah yeah <laughs> it's great I mean it's it seems that um, you're casting I mean I'm sure all casting agents are doing it but um, yes it, the diversity of what I'm seeing from from your agency is is amazing is this something that you guys are really pushing for yeah I, it's actually becoming obviously a lot more more evident um you know as we move forward uh, inclusivity and diversity is so is, is so necessary i think um and you know it's coming from the clients too they you know especially mccain which um was a globe which is a global brand um you know we need to represent global ethnicities so it's yeah it's it's very important that we showcase that and um you know you don't want it to ever be tokenism that's you know something that we've got to make sure is, um, you know, does it come across and look like that? Yeah, but yeah, the list diversity. Oh no, we've got our- Exactly, just sticking the list. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there are, you know, they, they, that can happen, but um, I think it's it's so wonderful to see clients um, pushing that, those boundaries and, and um, showcasing the diversity, which we're just so happy to be a part of and something that we really pride ourselves with. Yeah, so now, it's good. Yeah, I come from Sydney and I'm living in Melbourne now. Mm. Um, and you know, this sort of rivalry that you know, Melbourne is better than Sydney or Sydney is better than Melbourne. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, with your experience, I'm guessing casting, are you looking nationally or are you just sort of looking in your pool here for your, your, your sort of database? Yeah, so, um we it can open up we do a lot of work with sydney casting directors so yeah, right. um especially when it's uh you know it's 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 a small pool like especially when the age increases so it gets older and you're looking maybe 45 to 55 and you're looking for incredible actors so you need to open that up yeah. to find those people and especially like i'm just using this as an example like a car ad um you know when they're looking for really amazing actors and um where there's only you know there's a small pool in, say in both cities so in, in order to open it up and to show the best we have to open it up to both cities yep. um and so that's when we can get involved with the casting director in sydney and vice versa um and share the brief and get it out there and um open it up that way and so then you can be traveling from sydney or melbourne to shoot the job which is kind of fun for the actor yep. um but most of the time it is going to be because of budgets it's going to be kind of your your own city so melbourne only or sydney only um it's yeah it can be few and far between when you can open it up due to budgets but when you can it's it's exciting yeah and getting to be able to work with another casting director is fun i love it yeah, yeah for sure yeah um, yeah um, we could have a whole workshop and i'm sure you do do workshops um do you have yes. one that you're doing at the moment that you want that you can people can contact you on or is it sort of just isolation is really um restricting you oh no yeah it's i only do i get invited by courses here in melbourne so brave studios tafta those kind of schools um nida that do the melbourne courses here yeah. um 
so yeah, I I get invited to to train, you know, to tr not to train. I shouldn't say train. I'm not a teacher, <laughs> um, but to be there and do my cast, you know, do mock castings and do Q and A's and stuff. But yeah, nothing available um, at the moment. No problem. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> Amy, thanks so much for um, having a chat with us. There's so many different things, little takeaways that people um, can do that. Yeah. Um, a reminder that people can contact you. Don't go and knock on the door. 100%. Um, <laughs> have a really quick, um, you know, something that's effective to come to, to really take your attention like you would if you were going into the room. Make it sure it's your name. It's, you know, just something punchy. And um, yeah. like I said, you're an approachable person. Have some fun when you go in the casting room and, Look, hundred uh, percent. I hope. I wish you know everyone could get a job, but there's only a certain amount of people that get cast and things like that. But thank you so much. Yeah, for that's time right. Chat. No, thank you for asking me. Hopefully, there's something to take away from that. Absolutely is. Thank you. Thanks.